Let's see. Um, today we're going to be talking about template stuff like we've been doing over the past couple of classes. We're going to be talking about uh, uh, this exactly. We're talking. Uh, so last last week we, we set up all the tracks. We, we did the queue, uh, a little bit of analog saturation. We're going to be setting up the groups today. And then the stems will do all the mixing in the groups. We'll set up all the sends to the effects groups for the reverbs. And then we'll set up the... Uh, the plugins, the mastering plugins chain, and then uh, to the master. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Before we do that, hey everyone, uh, let me know if you can see the stream. Let me see if we are live. Let me know if you can hear this as well. It seems that we are live. Let me hit. Uh, let me go here. Copy this and make sure that we are live. I'm looking at the whole screen. Here. Yes, it seems like we are live. Great, awesome. Hey, Cobra Frio, thanks for joining. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, all right, cool, fantastic. Hey, Brandon, thanks for joining. Let's get this started. Okay, so that's that. And then. Yeah, I think we're good. It's recording, recording. You can hear, can you please confirm that you can hear this correctly? And also finally, I think I wanna have the chat, uh, restream chat, chat overlay, chat restream, here it is. And then open in browser, this guy over here. Yes, okay, so template is doing sound. All right, fantastic, I have it. I have it here. Boom, this is the chat. Great. Let me just test. Test. But it works. It should, it should work. There you go, it works. Ah, let's go. So, so once again, the goal for this class, we have hopefully a couple of hours, is we're going to go we set up this last week. This represents the tracks in a template, like these guys here. And this is my template. This is not what we were working on last week. This is my template. Let me real quick go here to OBS and then uh, full screen projector over there so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, fantastic. And then here, let me go to restream. Okay, fantastic. Um, and so this is what we did last, last week this guy and then we set up all the EQs and and um, all the EQs like this in each one of the tracks as well as the a little bit of analog saturation for each one of the tracks EQ to get rid of a little bit of the frequency stacking if we go here EQ we balance the cues we balance the tracks first with gain um, and to have all the template balance then we add a little bit of EQ to avoid frequency stacking and then we add a little bit of tape saturation to lift the sound so now we're going to be working on the groups we're going to set up all the groups and this is going to look something like this and this is my my, my template I'll, I'll go back and open the open the project that we were working on last week but we're going to set up all the templates all the templates all the groups so the string short high, string short low, etc. And then we're gonna add a few plugins and whatnot to uh, this. The goal of this is going to be to to prepare to to have to have our template mix the music that we're composing for us automatically. And then we're gonna go to then we're gonna create the stems, which is this. If we go here the stem so we're gonna go from tracks to groups to stems right we're gonna have hundreds of tracks generally then we're gonna have like 20 or 30 groups and then we're gonna go down to generally three to six stems orchestra percussion scenes keys something like this which in this template is uh, you can see it here these are my stems and um, basically we're gonna route everything from here to the stems and this will allow us to when we are uh, compose, we, when we are done composing, we can export and select, okay, export master and stems. And this is what you can send to DAP. Okay, so that's that. These are the stems. I think we are a little bit dark. And then also we're going to be setting up the reverbs, the, all the effects groups. All the effects groups in my template are here, are these guys here in purple faders. These are the effects groups. And here's where we have all the uh 
reverbs set up. So uh, Seventh Heaven, Cinematic. Um, we're gonna be using. Uh, we also have the Hala, etc. So this is the goal. This is the goal that we have for today. Hopefully, we're gonna be able to do this in a couple of hours. Any questions? Please post them in here. Buenas, Mark. Hey, Xavi. How are you? Cobra Frio. I'm 14 years old. At December, I'm going to play in a mini orchestra. I'm so excited. Congratulations, Cobra Frio. Um, good morning from Texas. Hey, Doug, Doug, how are you? All right, cool. Doug, what up? It's so good to see you. All right, fantastic. It's, uh, I'm happy that you found me on YouTube. <laughs> All right, let's go. So... What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be closing this guy here. Hey, good afternoon, Candido. So it's gonna be file close. Maybe it'll crash, but that's okay. So this is from uh, so this is a template from a movie that I'm working on right now, and um, and so this is organized as you can see here with a movie dialogues and effects dialogues uh, dialogue and temp up here and here's where i've got the markers we are not going to set up this part we'll do this in a in a different video uh in a different life but here's the markers tempo and all that good stuff that we need when we are doing film scoring and um so that's that awesome so i'm gonna close this one close no need to save and then uh, we're gonna move to how's the stream by the way any drop frames or any Weirdness going on, hopefully not. Okay. Um, Cubase file. And we're going to open recent. And the one that we were working on was. Uh, which one? I, I lost this one. Give me just one sec here. Let's go here. But meanwhile. Let me just go. Okay. So composing projects. Template training, this one. There you go. Gotcha. Got my kid over there. Because he's uh, a little bit ill, so there's no school for him today. Market, it's que, es que, you know, it's 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 Right, and then this one. Okay, and as we discussed, we had the uh, all the tracks loaded here. We used a template again. We were using we we're using BBC. We um, we we're using BBC free. We downloaded the template from their website, uh, and uh, which is the, they give you this template, which is awesome. And then we are improving this. Uh, this is what downloading a template generally, or or just loading the tracks. Doing this part here, loading all the tracks is just part of the game when setting up a template. And uh, at this point, you've got a beginner's template, in my opinion. Right. The next step is what we are doing to improve the sound, auto automate the mix. Uh, 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 Add all the mastering plugins and uh, hopes and so when you are composing, you are not just composing with the templates doing the work for you, so it improves the sound and blah blah blah. You can compose faster, more efficiently, and so that's what we are doing. So last week we did this, we added um, all the EQ saturation, etc. And today, which is this this thing here, we've got the EQ, we've got the saturation, we also balance the track, see the here the gain, and we also did all the panning. Cool for the strings, not for the entire template, because this would take a little bit longer, and I want to respect your time. So uh next we're gonna create the groups which we did so here are the groups let's uh close this so we've got all the groups here these are the groups and we created the strings high short strings high long strings low uh 
low short, strings low long, the woodwinds short, woodwinds long, brass short, brass long, percussion high, mid low. Okay, cool. I think that's that's good. So with that we can go here and we can route everything. Let's start with this. So we've got the piccolo. This would go. We've got the piccolo, piccolo. Uh, we've got woodwinds short, woodwinds long. Okay, cool. So we've got. Oh, let's make this bigger. So we've got piccolo. Longs, piccolo, short. Okay, so we're gonna have uh, the piccolo, long, flutes, long, oboes, oboes. Uh, this is long as well. Yes, and then we're gonna have clarinets, long, and bassoons. No, clarinets is still high. So all these, I'm gonna now go option shift for for cueling or cueling, right? For control shift, and then we're gonna uh, send all these not to master, but this uh, this is going to go to woodwinds what woodwinds long great and now we're going to select piccolo short flute short oboe short clarinet short and bassoon short by the way i missed, I missed this one and this one is going to go to woodwinds short the others including the bassoon that i didn't has to go to uh, woodwinds long okay awesome so yeah, i forgot the the piccolo long here now I play piccolo. Goes to the woodwinds long and then it hits the uh, orchestra uh, orchestra stem. Makes complete sense. Awesome. Let's continue. Now let's move to horns long, trumpets long, trombone long, bass trombone long, and tuba long. This is going to go to... Why do we separate long and short notes? Because we... Usually long notes, we can add a little bit more of reverb. And for short notes, we can add just a tad less reverb, especially for stiatos and things like this. It will help with clarity. So again, control shift, gonna go here, and this is going to be brass long. Brass long, and now we're gonna select this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And all the shorts, this is gonna go to brass short. Then we're gonna go to arp celesta. Arp celesta, what do we have here? Um, here's what I like to do, visibility. We're gonna have the, we're gonna have, so in visibility, zones, channels, zones. Here, we're gonna have the um, stems here. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, we're gonna have the reverbs, no, not the reverbs, the, the stereo out there. Fantastic, yes. Stereo out and uh, not the reverbs. These, not, not, not these guys. Boom. Okay, cool. And I, we don't need the click. Click, no need to. And we don't even need to see the click. So we're going to go to channel and we don't need to see the click. Okay. Out. Great. Zones. So here's the groups. We've got scenes and keys. Keys, fantastic. You know what? We're going to have the ARP Celesta go to keys. I don't know that. I know that the ARP is not the keys, but I'm just going to put it there for now. Um, yes. So these two guys are going to go to keys. No, not to keys. Sorry. Um, let me see. These are... Uh, are not the stems, so we're talking about groups. So we're gonna have um, Celesta. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna create a group for this. That's okay. We could we could have more separation, but for now I'm gonna create a group that is going to be uh, something that would be duplicate. So I'm gonna duplicate this track. Kind of like piano, piano, and then keys. All right, so he, eh, that works. Back here, so we can have the Celesta. Celesta could be percussion, but I'm going to have uh, the Arp. Yeah, Arp and Celesta are going to go to keys and others. Could be you can organize this however you want. Keys and others, and then we've got what is this? Unchained percussion. What do we have here? Let's see. So we've got high end. You know what? I'm going to 
This is how I would like to do this. I'm going to close this and tune, per, and tune percussion. I'm going to duplicate this guy and that this is going to be the height. Um, and tune perk high, copy, paste, low. And so here I'm just going to use for things like this. And this one I'm just going to use for the, the low percussion. Okay. And this obviously is gonna get routed. It's gonna be routed to this is gonna go the high. It's gonna go to percussion high, and this is gonna go to percussion low. Percussion low. Perk low. Timpani, tubular bells, tubular. I'm gonna consider this one mid percussion mid. We could separate um, these different ways with marimba. I'm going to, I could give this a different name. You know what? I'm going to have the xylophone, glockenspiel, marimba, uh, going to keys and others. Keys and others, this guy here. And I'm going to go to Willard Bells, is going to be mid percussion. I don't know if it's the best. This is something that you're going to be, once you have the template set up, you'll see inconsistency, inconsistencies, things that you don't quite like, routings that don't quite work, and it's something for you to decide later on. And timpani, I'm going to have it percussion low. I think it makes sense. All right, cool. So if we, if we go here and uh, we look down here while I play the timpani, exactly, percussion low. If I select percussion low here, the Grand Casa goes to percussion low, great. If I go to percussion high here, this is going to percussion high. If I've got the two Lar Bells, goes to percussion mid, great, xylophone. He's in others, clock and spill, and marimba. Goes here to Kids and others. Great. Awesome. Now, uh, for the strings, I think we are already... They are already routed. We routed this last week. So, violins, one long goes to U. Strings, high, long. And then, pizzicatos for D, let's say... Blah, blah, blah. Uh, uh, cellos pizzicatos are going to go to strings, low, short. Makes complete sense. And uh, double bass is pizzicato. Right, strings low, short. Fantastic. All right. Awesome. More. We good. We good. Great. Awesome. So that's step number one, which is we routed the different tracks, tracks to the right groups, to the right groups. Okay. Cool. Next, we're gonna set up the. And let's just remember, remind one more time what we're trying to do here. Let's remember. Let me see. Let me take some questions, if so, after this. So we have tracks, groups, stems, and master. This is the signal flow. We go from tracks, and the tracks, the goal is to avoid frequency stacking. That's why we have an EQ in each one of the tracks. The tracks are these guys here. Then after this, we also balance with gain, and then we add tape saturation to lift the sound. Each one of the tracks, okay? So balance and frequency stacking. I should have uh, also highlighted this in red, in red. The important thing here is balance and avoid frequency stacking. Then we go to the groups, which is what we just created now, right? And we route all the tracks to the different groups. And what we are trying to do here is mix. Here we're going to improve the sound. So mix. And here we're going to set up the compressors. We're going to, you know, the you know black box. We're going to do you know, a little bit of maybe um, tube tube saturation. A few more things maybe within the strings. We'll see. We'll, we'll start. We're going to start adding plugins right now. And also, and more importantly, I would say it's setting up the sense. Right. We're going to uh, for this. We're going to have to set up the effects groups with uh, with the reverbs like these. Here are the reverbs, short reverb, mid reverb, long reverb, you, you cannot see. Here, short, mid, long reverb, right? And uh, 
and this is going to be set up this way. We're going to have the groups with sends. We're going to send to the effects group, short, mid, long, and from here it's going to go to master. Okay. But what happened if I we want to export crew, uh, stems? If we want to export the stems, the reverb will not be printed in the stem. No problem, because with Cubase and with Logic, you can do the same thing. You can set it up like this, uh, master groups and sends, like, which is the C the CSPM. And from here, it's going to go to... Uh, give me just one second. All right, I'm back. So with this, what this uh, what this does is that Cuba is going to print the all the the reverbs in each one of the stems by doing a multi export. Okay, I am back. Cool. Awesome. So that's that. That's what we, that's what we're doing. Now I'm gonna take some questions. If there are any questions, if you get any question, please feel free to ask. Good afternoon, Douglas. It's so great to see you. Um, what's the difference between seventh, uh, seventh heaven and cinematic room? So um, think of seventh heaven as a, um, a quasi, or it's a kind of like it's like a convolution reverb. It's not exactly convolution reverb, but that's how I like to see. Um, it is um, how do they call it? I forgot the name. How do they call this? Uh, but let's go here to reverbs. Let's just insert. Uh, seven heaven here real quick uh, infusion 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 IR so it's kind of like um, it's like a mix between an algorithmic and a convolution think of this as a convolution reverb I like to think of this as if this was altiverb and you can here uh, simulate different rooms like for example halls you can have a large hall or for example spaces you can have uh, where is it uh, scoring a stage type of thing. So if I was using Altiverb here, I would be selecting, um, you know, Tadeo or the Fox scoring a stage, right? Which is part of the impulse responses that they've got that they offer. But uh, I like it. Just I, I I like this very very much. And so generally, when I think reverbs, generally you'll see this as, as I'm setting it up. Generally, let's say for the let's let's do this real quick. Uh, let's uh, call this. Let's duplicate this. Duplicate. There you go. And this is going to be the con uh, or the room room verb or convolution reverb. Okay. So I'm going to, oops, I'm going to move. No, I'm going to move room. I'm going to call this convolution convolution reverb okay I'm gonna move this one here so generally for example for strings the, the, what's the difference between uh seventh heaven and uh, and cinematic rooms cinematic rooms is more like a uh, an algorithmic reverb and uh, again seventh heaven is kind of like kind of like uh, or, or at least I like to use it as a convolution reverb it's not exactly a convolution but let's say here I would load uh, cinematic rooms and i would go for uh one that i like now i forgot where the preset is uh studios spaces halls score stage is one that i like for the long low strings kind of thing but anyway this works 2.2 seconds okay so let's imagine that now i'm uh playing with the strings and i've got the strings and let's say i'm here with the violin long note okay so what i would do is i would first have this go to this uh convolution reverb which is this one here. And then I would have this go to the long reverb, which is this one here. And let's see the effect. Let's just start with nothing, with nada, right? The strings. Dry. 
it's not quite dry again because this is uh, recorded in a big space in a big room but it's dry on top of that we add the convolution reverb at minus 15. boom it adds right so without with uh, and then on top of that let's make it more exaggerated plus two right that's obviously too much minus 15 works and then on top of that we're gonna add the algorithmic reverb this one and maybe we can just make it a little bit longer and we can bring it up at a minus seven clearly too much but you see the effect now way too much so we're gonna bring this down minus 12 so there you go okay it's saturated here uh i think yep that's too loud There you go. So that's the difference. Kind, kind of like convolution um, in the typical algorithmic reverb. Okay, but we may not be using these ones because they are these are expensive. Um, and for this template, I've showed them. I love them. I use it all the time. Um, and um, these are my to go reverbs at the moment. Uh, but I also use Bahala, which is more affordable in this case, and uh, it sounds just as good, in my opinion. Uh, it sounds different. It's uh, I use it for different purposes, but uh, it's one of my main reverbs as well. So we'll go with that one for this for this template. All right, good question, fantastic question. I hope this answers your question. Um, so, hey Leo. Hey, Cobra Frio. Yeah, 100%. Go for it. Thank you. Saludos. Stream is all good. Thank you. Um, any of you tried Westwood? No, haven't. So why is split high and low? Um, high and low only for strings? Uh, I split high and low. So, so the, I've, I've got full control and separation here at the tracks level. At the tracks level. Right? Now, the groups are just groups, right? It's a it's a way to keep things organized, to keep them to. Uh, so so here's where the mix is going to happen. Here's where the mix is going to happen, and so it's basically this. So to answer your question, you know why just low, high and low? Why not separating? I guess violin one, two, B, etc. Um, you can. If you if you want a hundred percent, it's your choice. Whatever works for you. If you um, if you watch the Anne Catherine's uh, template video, she has way more separation. Um, to me, it's like how simple can I get it? So like how simple can it be while still having enough flexibility, All right? So I don't necessarily need to have the viola separated from violins too, right? Uh, I with um, having the the violins high short, violins high long. Viol and then sorry, <laughs> strings high, long, string high, short, and then the, the same thing with the lowest strings. To me, it's enough separation. Uh, sometimes I like to have double bass separated in that, and it's, it feels like kind of like strings high, short, strings high, long, and then I've got the cellos long, cellos long, and then double bass long and short. So cellos long, short, and double bass long, short. So I have that to have that separation in the in the in the lower strings. So whatever works for you. Right, this is just a starting point. And then again, as you have your template created, my recommendation is put it to test. Right, you're gonna put your template to test and then see what things don't work, don't quite work, what things are broken first, what things you should improve, fix, and then what doesn't quite work for you based on your composing style and your voice, your sound. Um, you know, if if um, if it's too complex, then simplify. If it's too simple and not enough flexibility, then add complexity. And it's just finding that that balance. Right? Hopefully, that answers your question. But it's uh, it's just a starting point. It's just uh, you can do whatever you want in terms of how much separation you want. Cool. All right. Already, 
Long and short can uh, understand for river, but why high and low specifically for strings? Oh, sorry, I didn't uh, read this one. Because uh, generally high pitched notes usually will accept more reverb and low pitched instruments, that's where the muddiness is. And it's also good to separate that. So sometimes I will not add or add, add less reverb. Uh, so for example, in my main template, I've got obviously the violins one, two, violas, etc. But I also, for the strings, have um, like an ensemble but. And I've got an ensemble strings high, ensemble strings low, and I have them separated because to the uh, ensemble high pitched the strings kind of thing, I have more reverb, and for the low strings I have no reverb. So then that way, when I'm you know just doing the ensemble thing, I'll do the you know kind of like the tri triadic, triadic chord for the higher strings, and then they are kind of like the open octave for the lower strings. This lower octave will have no reverb. This will have reverb sort of thing, and that will make a. Uh, uh, It'll sound much better because we, it will it will avoid muddiness in the in the mid low end because we don't want that much, too much reverb in that area. Cool. There you go, JD. Thank you for explaining everything that I said in one phrase. Way more efficient. Thanks. So when you can post it, I should I should <laughs> before answering questions, I should read below. Uh, so when you can post uh, the individual lines are separated by depth and the word player sit. Yes, but this is our, this is uh, automatically achieved uh, first because the way it got recorded, you know, <clears throat> this the the way it's recorded, it's more complex than this. But basically, they set up the Deca tree mics here and the out the, and the outringer or the wide mics, right? And then the sort so they've got the mic set up, and then because each section sits at different, so for example, the the percussion will sit here, right? And woods will sit here. And the strings sit closer just because of and it's and it's literally closer to the mic array. And so because it's closer or farther away, whatever it is, we already have that sense of depth. We, don't, we do not need to recreate that sense of depth. If we are using like a completely dry library, like VSL or something like the old VSL or something like this, yeah, then yes, we then we would use a multi uh, IR convolution reverb and we can set depth, etc. But there's no need. There's no need because it's already been recreated. Then later on, by adding the reverbs like the room reverb or convolution reverb and the algorithmic reverb, then we can enhance that depth if we want. Yes, 100%. But don't don't worry too much about it. It's more important what I have said. Um, also because, think about this, not always we are recreating realistic depth in cinematic music. Sometimes we are recreating, you know, uh, traditional, realistic, orchestral depth, but many times we don't, right? The, you know, think uh, trailer music. Trailer music doesn't follow traditional balance nor traditional depth. So, and sometimes we're going to have uh, more cinematic percussions right, sitting in front, right? Recorded in a separate room. It's just for the for, for, for better sound, more modern production, and uh, better, it's more impactful mix. So, depth is important. It's already been recreated. We can enhance it with reverb to one, but don't worry too much because sometimes we're going to go against that depth. Some, sometimes we're going to have a, you know, orchestra with a, uh, with, uh, um, like uh, like the the Jason board, the Born Ultimatum soundtrack, the cellos, the that 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 super famous motif. Um, the the cellos sound closer than usual, and that's because they they got the mics closer. Um, Alice in Wonderland strings um, sound a little bit closer than usual, so they brought they, so they they gave a little bit more presence to the to the spot mics, not to the close ones, but the spot ones. So it uh, I. <clears throat> How do I know either by listening or because I've been I attended those mixing sessions right in the beginning, um, and I've seen how. So sometimes we are not doing this is, again. Think about what is the ultimate outcome. What do you want to achieve, and then work with what you've got to get there uh, sonically. Ah, hope hope this answers your question. Hope this answers your questions and uh, question. And I hope that no, so not someone else uh, answered this question already. Low strings. La, 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 la. Hope you kill will feel better. Thank you, Har Har Harry. Where is he? He uh, Ali is upstairs, Alicia. So he must be with her. Let me let me just check. Ali. And I'm back. 
he's upstairs, but he was uh, coughing and uh, he decided to go with mom so I can finish his class. He'll be back after the class. Thanks for, thanks, uh, Harry. You're awesome. Uh, can you show how to set up tape saturation in every type? Yes, go watch the, go watch this. If we go here, let's make this big. Uh, so if you go to cinematic, composing, YouTube, or something like this, YouTube, there you go. Boom. And then you go, if you go here to life, and uh, this uh, uh, taking a beginner's blah, 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 taking a beginner's or casual template and turning it into pro. This is no, no, no. Don't watch this one because we had lots of drops. Instead, go to videos and watch this one. Taking beginner's or casual template and turning it into into a pro. This one is the one that you want to watch. And uh, at some point, uh, halfway through it, we, we were setting up all the all the tape saturation. Ah, uh, cool. Are you getting QA 13? Of course, of course I am. Um, it's just a matter of time. But yes, you know, soon. Maybe next week you'll see me with QA 13. I think it's great. Um, thanks for asking your question. My pleasure. Thanks for the great question. How to get pizzicato bass to cut through the mix? Um, you just, you just, you just don't. You just don't. The the pizzicato bass does not cut through the mix. It does the opposite right? It provides that low end support. So if you want the pizzicatos, the, uh, and that's my personal opinion, that's how I approach orchestration. And that's how I even approach mix, mix and 80% of the mix, 80% of the mix, if not more happens, in my opinion, in the arrangement process, in the composing, it could like make it sound good in the composing, right? So blah, blah, blah. You, 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 you know, you know, the whole thing that I always say, right? You, so there are, so how to how how to get pizzicatos bass pizzicatos to cut through the mix? Double them with cello pizzicatos, right? Or uh, double them with cellos and and violas pizzicatos, or double them with um, with some sort of like percussive accent, or double with them with uh, bassoons and contrabassoon staccatos, right? Just double them uh, because they are not meant to cut through the mix. Like there was a question last week, is like. Uh, if I cut the low end of the double basses and then I enhance the frequency rather than it would it would sound more aggressive for these stack up or whatever. No, it's, it's just double them with like proper orchestration. Um, that's my opinion. Okay, um, that's what works for me. That being said, you can do whatever you want. You can totally 100% process the heck out of the you know, double basses, staccatos, or pizzicatos. And you can do whatever you want at the end of the day. Um, and it depends, again, we're talking about the outcome. What's the outcome? The outcome is to, what, what, what do you hear in your head and how to get there? Uh, but if you want the double basses to cut through the mix, double them with, so with uh, some sort of like a pizzicato or something that, that cuts through the mix a little bit better. Um, cool, awesome, that would be my answer. Hey, Mark, question. You route it reverb effects channels to the master. Doesn't make that uh, dub stage uh, sound different than master. It would, it would. Yes, 100%, great question, Cheyenne. This, it would, except that in Cubase, when, uh, in Cubase, when you are exporting, you can set it uh, master groups and sends. And what this does, it's gonna create, it's gonna do five exports, one for the master and another, another for the orchestra, percussion, scenes, and keys, solo. Uh, it, it'll solo the master, it'll solo, it'll mute. So for example, it first it will export, export the master stereo. Second, it will mute percussion, scenes, and keys, and will export just the orchestra stem through the stereo out, and it, would, it will label it as orchestra. Right, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's like a mini AI assistant that does this for you. The export takes four times longer because it has to, do, or five times longer, four times because it has to do it five times. But uh, it'll it'll print the reverse there. Uh, quite a cool thing. I think that was in version 11 or 12, 11. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Saves a lot of time. That's amazing. Or not saves a lot of CPU power because in the past you had to have the reverbs inserted if you wanted to print them in the steps for that. Great question. You know what you're talking about, for sure. Hey Mark, greetings from Brazil. Wow, how are you? Xavi, Mark, how do you route an orchestra, um, an orchestral or ensemble track? To a group or to a stem directly to the to the group, and um, generally I have a group for ensembles. I've got orchestral ensembles and uh, percussion ensembles. Great question, great question. Um, Dogukan, 
I usually use uh, I use mixed microphones, but I still notice that I use the microphones change to so the, the sound quality. How should microphones be used, or which microphones should be used? So generally, I start with the. Uh, in this case, we are using a very simple library, so we don't have control over the microphones. But generally, I start with the um, with the either with the provided mix kind of thing, um, or I'll. Um, I'll start with the, the the room mics. So these are the decatries, the outringers, or the or the wide mics, and then a little bit of the of the surround mics. And this that that set of mics, the decatry and the wide, that's eighty percent of the mix. A little bit of the surround if you need a little bit more space. That is it. Most of the times, that's all you need. That is the sound of an orchestra because on a scoring stage, basically, it's a slight, it's a sort of, it's a recreation of what you would hear in a, in a concert hall. Not quite, but let's start there, okay? Uh, so let's imagine that you have, you're sitting in an orchestral, in a, in a hall, in a concert hall, and you've got the orchestra. the orchestra. The orchestra is sitting, what, like 30 feet away from you, like 10 meters, 20 meters, something like this, right? And so the orchestra, uh, what you're hearing is direct sound from the orchestra plus the reflection from the walls at a certain distance, right? And that is what we recognize as the orchestral sound, right? The orchestral, the orchestral sound is not quite what the violin one hears in the orchestra. It's what the audience hears away from the orchestra, right? And the orchestral sound is the is the is the combination of the direct sound coming from the orchestra plus the reflections from the, so the river, the room river from a concert hall, which are great spaces that that just embellish the sound. All right, cool, awesome. What is an scoring stage? An scoring stage is an as big space to record a big instrument, an orchestra, right? And so, because it's a big space, it also has a room river, but it's a studio. It's an scoring stage. It is not a hall. A concert hall will have a longer river, right? And a studio is in a space where we can control the sound a little bit better and more. And so there is river, but there's less river, right? So in each stage, you know exactly the reverb tail for different frequencies, right? So I forgot now, but I think uh, uh, Warner Bros. is 1.8 or something like this. Um, uh, Sony scoring a stage is 2.1, so the, the so something like this. And uh, the, the mixing engineers in town, they know exactly the decay time, for high frequencies, low frequencies, etc. And so depending on the, your score or the uh, the soundtrack, if they're going to record in one space or the other, depending on what they want. If it's an action, then so maybe they're going to be recording in whatever, right? In Warner or Fox or, uh, or the MGM or the Sony scoring a stage. So depending on what you want, right? Air Studio is very different than Abbey Road, etc. Um, so, so that's that. Why was I saying all this? So yes, and uh, exactly. So it's a combination. The orchestral sound is a combination of the. It's it's a what 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 we get in a scoring stage is a representation of what you would get in a concert hall. It's just more control. In a concert hall, what you would get is the combination of direct sound plus the reflections of that great sounding room a hall, a concert hall. In a scoring stage, it's the same thing. It's just a little bit closer. Okay, it's a little bit closer, a little bit more controlled. And so the, the mics are a little bit, it's like if you were kind of like, kind of like sitting in the kind of like the first or second row, right? Um, so it's a little bit closer, it has more detail, it has more clarity, and plus the room is more absorbent, a little bit more absorbent than a concert hall, which is more reverberant, okay? That is the, ori the original orchestral sound, okay? That's what, what we want to start with. From that point on, everything else, so, and for that, that means that you just need the decatry mics and the wide mics, right? That is what you need. Maybe a little bit of the surround mics, you need a little bit more of a space. That is it. Now, after that, you start pushing up or you bring up the close or the spot mics a little bit if you need something in particular. But generally, when, um, when, uh, when you are in a scoring stage and the mixing engineer is tracking the orchestra, meaning recording the orchestra but also if you look at the faders the faders is a representation of what the people sitting in the scoring stage booth so the director the composer etc the producers it's what they are hearing and if you look at the at the nif or the the mixing board or the tracking board you're gonna see five mics up with the deca tree one two three so left center right right the two whites and you see the, those five at just general like at zero or something like this and then you see lots of other you know faders which are all the spot and close mics at down right down maybe sometimes they push them a little bit for a little bit of extra detail that's it 
that's what you hear. What's getting recorded, it comes from the sense goes to uh, to the Pro Tools. Um, and that's all, that's all the way up because you want to record. But anyway, you, you, you get the point. So you do not need that much closed mics. Those closed mics are there for specific things that you may want to get, but be very careful and very cautious because again, the closed mic is a closed mic. When you are when you are uh, in, a scoring, in a scoring stage or when conducting or which is closer to an orchestra than usual, right? Or when you are in a concert hall listening to an orchestra, you are not sitting next to the cello with your ear next to the cello at like, you know, three feet away, which is the spot mics, right? Or the closed mics. Or the spot mics, right? You are not sitting, you know, close to the, you know, violins one section, right? Um, at this height, right? You, you are not sitting there. You're sitting farther away. The closest representation of you sitting farther away is the deck at your mic plus the whites plus the uh, outringers uh, plus the um, uh, reverb, uh, reverb uh, surround mics, okay? Um, hopefully this answers your question. Start with that and then you can push the close or the spot mics just a tad. Um, and rock and roll. My pleasure. Dohukan. Mark, what's your opinion on Misu, Misu uh, Cine Samples? I still haven't played I, um, that much with it. I love Cine Samples. Uh, I love the libraries. I did a comparison uh, recently for the strings when it comes to strings um, with Cinematic Studio Strings and the new Abbey Road Violins 1. And, uh, I, and I, I, love, I, I love brass. I love the, the strings. I don't use the woodwinds that much. Um, I love some of the the, 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 the orchestral percussion library. The, the percussion library they've got is amazing. I think it sounds um, sounds great. Uh, the uh, the the all drums of wars. I've got I've got many of them. Um, just uh, the if if I if I do have a complaint with the strings, sometimes a little bit inconsistent, and uh, some short notes are a little bit out, out of tune, uh, especially the long short notes kind of thing. Um, I like the short notes for the strings very much for the uh, brightness and aggression. Tends to be a little bit brighter library, which I love because it got recorded with the uh, vintage M50s in the Deca Tree. Um, and uh, that capsule is a little bit brighter and that's more cinematic. That and the, compared to other libraries like Cinematic Studio Strings, you don't have to brighten them like I have uh, for I have black box inserted in my strings for Cinematic Studio for Cinematic Studio Strings just to brighten them and to pair them with uh, with uh, what uh, with uh, Cine Strings for example that already sound a little bit brighter. And in a comparison, they could come up like harsher, but it's not that. It's just that the way that got recorded, which I love, and we need for for cinematic music that little that extra clarity. Um, I mean, Musio at the moment it doesn't have as much control, in my opinion, as you know, like the full version, right? Like the, the, the panning and the mic. There's, there's certain things that are not there, right? But I like the concept very, very much, um, and I haven't explored it enough to give you uh, an informed decision. I think uh, I'd love to play with it a little bit more before I give you. But the sounds again, uh, the, the sounds are there. I like the concept that you can, um, you know. Uh, download and and load the sound right there. It's, I think it's amazing. It's a great concept, and obviously they are working on the player to make it more uh, to have to have for it to have more features. All right. Mike, do you think that someday soon we will ha soon we will have able uh, an uh, AI IR plugin that will allow to position an instrument where yeah this already exists not AI but there's a multi not AI but there's a there are multi uh, more multi convolution reaper plugins that you can set up they they took like 90, 90 convolution you know positions in a, in a stage and you can move the the instruments around Vienna has BSL has one of these and there's another one it's called I forgot someone put it in the chat please. It's called yeah. There you go, Harry. Exactly. Check Vienna. So this is the Vienna one, um, and uh, there's another one that I, I think it's called the Stage, something like this. I don't use it because again, I don't, I don't care. I don't have to recreate this space. It's already already been recreated. I don't use, um, and I could. This could be useful for um, something like a completely dry signal that you want to position in the stage. But uh, generally, um, no need. Uh, and it can be recreated with the reverse that I've got. And finally, QH or Logic in 2023. They're, they're both great. It's just the same. It's the same thing. 
It's, they do, they, especially these days, they do the same, the exact same thing. Thanks for the fantastic question. Let's continue. Ah. Where are we? I did this so I don't... Uh, let's... Um... Okay, so let's set up a, a little bit of a compression for percussion. Okay. Let me save. We're going to go here. So let's add a few plugins here. So we've got... So we have got... Let's... Um... Let's bring the reverse all the way here. Convolution one, two, three, four, five, six. Great. And so here we got the groups. So now here for percussion, percussion, I like to add a little bit of uh, these are my inserts, and you can see them. Yes. So so um. For percussion, I like to have this guy in one, two, three, four, five. You can do six. I forgot if you can do six. Can you, can you do six? Yeah, six. I, I don't think you need that much. Oops. <laughs> Seven. Now with... Uh, oops. What did I do? Did I delete this guy? Percussion high again. Multiband. It's a one, two, three, four. There you go. There's one. Uh, here we can get rid of this. Why? Ah, it's my bad. I know exactly what I'm doing wrong. So one here and one here. And now we're going to do one, two, three. Great. Awesome. So this is going to go all the way to 80, something like this. This is going to go from 80 to the end of the muddy area, kind of like 300 or something like this. This is going to cover the mid low, something like here, like 1K, something like this. Um, and then there's going to be uh, till 10K. And then we're going to have there this, this guy. And we're going to set up, can, can I select all of them? Yes. And the range is going to be minus three, something like this. That's how much we want to compress. Uh, we can see like, like this, minus three. Threshold, we'll set it up in a second. And the... Ratio is going to be two to one max, so very subtle. And what this will do is, if we go here to let's see, this is high, so hypercut the high percussion here. Okay, let's set the threshold for all of them. There you go. And then the attack is going to be fast. And the release is going to be a little bit. Slow. All right, cool. Cool, awesome. We can duplicate this guy here for a mid and percussion mid, percussion low. Now for mid, let's go to the tubular. So select all of them and we're going to bring the... Okay, kind of thing. We'll have more instruments. So, so we have we should take into consideration that uh, this is going to sound louder at some point. And then finally, here for low, we're going to go this low, low, yes. Okay, cool. 
So there you go. We've got a little bit of this guy here. And then we're gonna have, I know that we have to work on this later on, but I'm going to duplicate this guy all the way to the percussion, percussion here, percussion uh, stem. So let's write some percussion. Let's do something here. Let's blah, blah, blah. Two, three, and cool. One, two. it's great. Yes. Ah, chin, chin. Done, done. Great, boom. Quantize. Let's record here. Okay, what else? Um, So we've got this guy here. What else can we have? Timpani. Cool. Um. Yeah, I think that's uh. What else? I think we could have, I'm um, gonna duplicate this one. And we have percussion mid here. And this is, I'm doing this because the limitation of this library, and this is gonna go to percussion mid. Um, so, because I think the toms are mid. Um, we, we did not work on the percussion groups, uh, sorry, the tracks the other day. I'm going to real quick, uh, these guys here, I'm going to make them stereo. Oops, wrong. These guys here, come to E, so you can see a little bit better. Just going to close them. I like close percussion, uh, plus minus. You know, 70 somethings. And um, we can close this one and copy, copy, paste, paste. Okay. The timpani, I like it a little bit more open. We would have to do EQ and all that, but 
So we've got this guy here. Uh, I think the, the snare could be considered mid. Let's consider it mid. So now we're going to have some uh, kind of like... This can be mid as well. Cool. And then... Good enough. Yes. So this is what we've got here. So let's see how this is hitting the compressors. Great, I think it's working. It's not compressing too much. Remember, this is it's compressing less than three dBs, so that's quite transparent. And we are doing this to control. And then we're gonna open this, which is the one in the group. Let's see how much it's compressing. Okay, it's all maxed out, so good. I'm gonna bring it just, uh, so minus 33, uh, I'm gonna make it minus 32, one dB and a half less. Great, awesome, thank you. No, I said, I said thank you, because I was looking at the stats and uh, I saw 42 of you, and I just, just wanted to say thank you uh, for being there. Uh, all right, let's continue watching this bit. Um, so, okay, so that's the first thing that we're going to do. Um, I also, so we are we are working on this right now. We're, we're, we're working on making, on the mix, groups, compression, reverb sense, etc. We want to enhance, we want to make this uh, sound a little bit better. So next thing that I'm going to do, and the fab filter, I guess, uh, multi, 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 multi band compressor. I could have done the same thing with Cubase, okay? I could have done the exact same thing with Cubase. Um, in fact, I'm going to just for one of them. How to bring down the threshold? Let's see. One. Uh... There we go. See, see that? That's we 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 want this to go not lower than three dBs. So it went down minus seven dBs. So we have to compensate four dBs. So minus forty-four to minus uh, thirty-nine, uh, like something like this. Minus four, minus thirty-seven, etc. Right, and we would adjust this this way. Makes sense. So that's how we would do uh, how we would do it with free plugin. We would uh, uh, adjust the the ratio at two or less, the the attack, uh, you know, as fast as possible, and the release can be auto or it can be you know relatively slow, something like this. Okay, cool. Um, I just did it with uh, with fat filter just because of uh, speed and usability. I'm used to this one, okay. And I also like to control how much compression, the range, how much compression. I like that. That no matter what, it's never going to compress more than three dBs. For example, here when you sell it with uh, with the range minus three point twenty three dBs, never going to compress more than that. Um, cool, awesome. So that's that. We start with. Sorry, we started with the uh, compression. Uh, 
um, let's, uh, let's work on the strings a little bit. So for the strings, um, I like this trick. I like to open the strings a little bit. So uh, you don't have to do this, but S1, um, I like it. And I like to open the, the strings a little bit. So if we go to the strings here, I like to open them a little bit. No, here. There you go. The cat. See, that would be obviously too much. Uh, so I'm going to open just a... Just a tad, see? 1.4, very subtle. So pay attention to the sides. Obviously with the speakers very hard, with headphones a little bit easier. Uh, but uh, when it's uh, yellow, it's, uh, it sounds a little bit more center. And if you pay attention to the sides, when I um, when I activate it, it kind of like fills up the space on the sides a little bit more. So I'll start um, not active. Okay, especially in the in the in the high end is where you 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 can hear it more more open. So I like to do this with uh, with the, especially the, the highest strings. You can do this with the lowest strings, but generally I just do this with high strings. Second thing that I like doing is to add a little bit of brightness to the strings. So I'm gonna show you a trick that I that I love, which is this black box analog design, and I like this preset, which is the eighteen uh, mix bus two. And then I like to bring down the air amount, but one sec. Now here, there you go. It saturates a little bit the mid-high end, which adds a little bit of brightness and lifts the sound a little bit. I like to bring this down at like minus at uh, 20%, something like this. And that's how I brighten the strings a little bit um, in a very, very subtle way. Um, if not, you can you can just EQ the strings a little bit. So I find that most of libraries, except for cinematic, cinemat, cine strings, most of libraries sound a little bit dull and dark and mellow for the strings. That's typical of a string libraries as compared to as a, as a live orchestra. And this is uh, very typical again, when you put, when you set up mics far away from the orchestra, the first frequencies that you're gonna lose uh, um, are the high frequencies. So that's very typical that recorded samples, recorded samples sound a little bit darker. And that's, uh, that's why, Denny Sands compensated for this, for the cine samples, samples. So they sound like by placing those um, M50 vintage mics and by you know recording it um, in a in a very uh, cinematic way, in my opinion. So, but when you compare, it feels like a little bit harsher. Anyway, this adds that tiny li little bit of. But if you cannot do that, you can just. Um, if you don't have this plugin, then you can brighten them a little bit with, let's just bypass this plugin, with something like, with something like, ah, oh, with a little bit of EQ. Uh, let's just uh, record something here. Cool. So long still now we're gonna boom here to oh, here. And we're gonna bring J this one here. Okay, great. Let's go.
you go. Just a tad. Just a tad. Um, for the strings, we could uh, and we could duplicate this reverb, uh, this EQ, uh, copy, EQ. Activate. Copy. Paste. Paste. And paste. Right. No, and paste here. Paste. So that's that. A little bit of lift for the strings, which I think it's necessary. So that's it. Okay. We added just to move forward because I've got 30 minutes left. Oh my gosh. So um oh, by the way, this happens all the time. Pad filter adds. As you can see, uh, 20 milliseconds of latency because we have active the what the uh, look ahead. Yes, look ahead. There you go. Off and boom. Now it's gone to zero. So gonna go here. Look ahead. Look ahead. Look ahead. Off. So don't forget about this. Otherwise, you're gonna be like, we got so much latency, so much latency, my system. Why um, this? off and finally the one that we added here it's adding 20 milliseconds but same thing look ahead off cool ah. great awesome so we worked a little bit on on the stems on the groups to improve the mix and uh, so we we open the strings a little bit, we brighten them a little bit, we add a little bit of compression for recursion. There's not much that we need other than reverbs. Let's go to reverbs. So for reverbs, I like. Let's go. So the reverbs are here. So you've got if you don't have if you don't have any reverb, uh, here's a su suggestion. You can use a convolution reverb uh, that's built in Cubase. Uh, Logic has a great convolution reverb as well. And then here's um, the kind of like algorithmic reverb. Okay, the convolution reverb is um, is called this guy here. Um, re reverence, and uh, you can choose different uh, a um irs and then here is this come room works this is kind of like the algorithmic reverb okay um i personally like the um as i said seventh heaven i use it a lot and then i use cinematic uh rooms i'm gonna go ahead if you give me a second uh so you can take a screen grab of uh, the all the settings of my of my my reverb settings. Where is this? Give me just one sec. Reverbs. Reverbs. There you go. There you go. Ah, uh, this one here. What did they do? What did they? Ah, yeah, yeah. I see. So these are my these are my reverbs. So you get so it is, so this stays in the video, and you can take on a screen grab of this. Uh, let's make this just a tad smaller. Let's let's put this in here, and let's make this a little bit like this, so it goes to the left of the screen. All right, cool. So this is my short gated reverb. This is my short gated reverb for uh, you know top of the mix and high percussion. Bahala Room is the big gate preset. This is the uh, late and early settings. Then for uh, for this, I've got another short reverb, which is this one here. It's a Fab Filter Pro R. It's also uh, a short, kind of like short reverb, 1.2 1, 1. 1. 1. seconds. I like it for percussion. Generally, it's still a wide reverb, as you can see. Um, then I use uh, Seventh uh, Heaven for uh, kind of like a, like a mid type of reverb. And then I've got the Cinematic Room's main orchestral reverb, which is this one. Um, so this is where uh, my orchestra, my orchestra stem, not group, my orchestra stem hits this reverb, right? So um, so that's like a third reverb. Uh, we'll, set up this, we'll set this up in a second. Uh, sometimes my main orchestral reverb is this one. Sometimes it's this one. This one is a this, uh, the, the Bahala Rooms is a little bit uh, brighter and I really like this preset precast with uh, with a few modifications but it's the precasty concert hall this is the uh, late and this is the early for uh, the cinematic rooms is the dark cathedral preset with a few mods at uh, 2.3 reverb length 
uh, here is 2.6. And then for long high, kind of like long high strings, long high, things like this, um, I like uh, this is the kind of like the this is the kind of like the long algorithmic reverb is going to be cinematic rooms legato hall. And then for orchestra long low, so for cellos, things like these double basses, I like the score stage because it's a little bit shorter, more controlled. So that's that. For brass, I like this AR brass, uh, sorry, the AR1 from Waves, all good reverb uh, with the uh, with the ambience hall. Um, it's a hall uh, impulse response, um, nice even decay, uh, 2.0. Uh, length, it's great. I like it for trumpets and horns specifically, but for brass in general. And then when I want like a super ultra mega low, a uh, long, sorry, reverb, uh, I, I like this one is this low attack cathedral, which is, uh, you know, 14 seconds reverb for when you want like a kind of like a never ending. If you break this up, it kind of like feels like a never ending reverb. All right. So these are my, these are my set of reverbs. I, I, I printed them here. I screen grabbed them here because uh, we don't have, I don't have my template open. I just wanted for you to be able to take a few screenshots and uh, test, test this out. But for now, we're going to set it up, set them up ourselves. So let's see. Um, we kind of already did that, but um, Let's see. We we we've done the we've done the strings, right? We've done the violins. If we go here, oops, the strings are here. So if we violin long, so violins one is hitting the strings high long. This guy here, and then we've got the convolution reverb, which is hitting this uh, seventh heaven, and then we have the the long reverb. That's hitting this one, okay. An alternative to this could be uh, for a for a convolution reverb. We could have this one with these settings, and we could have for the algorithm reverb this one with these settings. Okay, whole Los Angeles. This is the preset. Cool. You can copy this preset. It sounds sounds very very good. Now let's uh, set up a reverb for percussion. Because percussion generally doesn't need that bunch of reverb, but the top of the mix percussion can benefit from what a, uh, a gated reverb very very much. So let's go with a uh, high. Okay, so this triangle. Let's go with something a little bit. Dry. Yeah. So this tambourine goes from here to the what? To the percussion high stem, and then it goes to the percussion. Sorry, to the percussion uh, high group, and then it goes to the percussion stem. So here we want to add. We, we want this to go to. I'm um, gonna create. Let's go here. Let's go here, then here, and let's create a convolution reverb, short reverb. Let's create a duplicate this, and let's create a gated. Got gated reverb. Okay, gated reverb, short reverb. Now let's go back here. Let's go to the percussion high. Go to tambourine. Tambourine. And this goes here. Percussion high. Percussion high. We're going to set up a send to the gated reverb. Activate this. Now we don't have anything. Now it goes here. Sounds louder because it's a copy. But we, what we want is... No, here. Gated okay, reverb. What we want is let's go with Bahala. Bahala. And we're gonna go with let's see if I can find this preset. Uh, by the way, plate reverb. I will set up a plate reverb for the mid percussion. Uh but we we're, we're we're looking for how was it called? Um uh, big gate, I think it was. How was it called? Uh, big gate. Big gate. Where are you? Ambience has got video chambers dark and effects. No? Gated. There you go. Big gate. Makes sense. Okay. There you go. So instead of, and it's too much, but, but instead of, now we've got too much. Let's bring this at minus 12. There you go. So without, without, with. 
So when this is grayed out, it's without, and with this color orange, it's with. So comparing. Maybe a little bit more. Great, that's what we need. Let's see the... There you go. What else can we try? Well, we want it's a width, but but fast de fast uh, decay kind of thing or short reverb with fast decay. That's it. Okay, cool. Let's set up a sort of like a, a mid reverb, mid plates reverb for um, for um, metal percussion and things like this. That can work very well. So let's say that we. And again, if you need more separation, I have my uh, non pitched metal percussion in a different stem. So you can do that as well. So where's the mid reverb? Mid, mid reverb. We're going to set up a plate reverb. So Valhalla here, Valhalla rooms. And I'm going to go for like a plate type of thing. And it's going to be, let's see, let's see. Mm, two seconds. Let's make it a, let's see the next four, three, four, three. Let's go with A plate, A plate a little bit shorter. Let's see, so it's set up already here. Let's go with the percussion. No, let's... Uh, You know what? See now, uh, so high, and these are going to be. I'm going to duplicate this, and this is going to be metal, percussion metal, percussion kind of thing. So the high pitch, uh, so cymbals, cymbals, etc., this kind of thing. Okay, so cymbals, now we're going to go back to here. And uh, simple. Oh, what, what have I done? Oh, I have to have another one here. String la, la, la. duplicate. No, wrong one. Sorry. Remove. Uh, percussion here. Duplicate. Timbals, etc. This guy here, moving is uh, moving as fast as I can. Um, okay, because I have to leave in the in t twenty minutes. So let's say that that I've got this uh, this one that is routed to the percussions one, cymbals, etc. Yeah, this one. It's hard but if, uh, to, to hear because it, the, the cymbal hit, or the piatti hit in this case, I think it is. Uh, the piatti hit um, has, uh, has a tail, right? But if it was chucked, right, we, we could hear the reverb a little bit better. But let's, uh, let's go with what we've got. So this, was, this one goes here. We do not want this to go to the gated one. We're going to go to the kind of like mid reverb. And this one goes here, which is the Valhalla plate, right plate. There you go. Let's make it exaggerated. Instead of minus 10, it's going to be zero. Okay. Without. With. Okay, so that's that. It uh, adds a little bit of width. Uh, it's too much, obviously, so I'm going to make it minus 10. Okay, cool. I think it can accept a little bit more. Minus eight. Ah, cool. Awesome. So, reverbs set up 
obviously I haven't finished the whole setup, but uh, this is how you would do it. And now next step is going to be uh, ensure, uh, so we're gonna go here, ensuring that all the reverbs are set to the sent or, or that go to the master. So let's see if that is true. You know, all these reverbs should go to master, like stereo out, fantastic, great. And, uh, and uh, let's continue. So we have all the groups with kind of like a compression for the compression for the percussion. We've opened the strings a little bit. We've brightened the strings a little bit. So a little bit of mixing, right? Then we added the sense. We just worked with the strings and a little bit of percussion. We set up the the uh, the the reverbs, and we have seen that generally we're gonna have first a convolution reverb and then an algorithmic reverb, and that's what we. By the way, um, this is all post fader, uh, pre uh, post fader. So, so that's that, and we would do this with the rest of the instruments for percussion. Sometimes we can do the same thing at a little bit of convolution reverb first, just at that, and then the algorithmic reverb. We have seen that for high pitch percussion or top of the mix percussion, the gated fast reverb works great. For metal percussion, something like a plate works, a short plate works great as well. So something between one to two seconds plate reverb. So we've seen some examples of that. We've seen uh, uh, some uh, plugins under one hundred dollars. A little bit more. Um, we've seen free plugins or stock plugins that come with Cubase, and Logic has great ones as well. And then we've we've seen other more high end, more expensive plugins that I use. Okay, I use all of them. Uh, so anyway, I like the musicality of Cinematic Rooms, for example, and it has uh, such a um, um, immersive sound. That's a, the, the the word I was looking for. All right, cool. That's it. Let's continue. Next, we're going to uh, do the mastering, and we are done. Let's go. What I uh, let's do this. So orchestra percussion. Since we are talking now about the the stems here, this is what is going to allow us to export for DAP. Uh, and so when we're done, it's like okay, we export the master and also the stems, so I can send this to DAP Mix, and they can do the they can mix my music with the dialogue and sound effects. Cool, but we don't send you know hundred tracks. We send just three, four, five, six groups or stems in this case. Okay, so let's go there. And and what we want is that the sum of the stems to sound exactly the same as the master. So the the uh, there could be a way around this, but generally what I do is I do the mastering in each one of the stems. And so for mastering, we are going to need we are going to need number one, generally. Okay, let's uh let's make this high. So for mastering, we're gonna need uh sometimes a little bit of EQ, like over, but uh, we're not gonna go there. Uh so a little bit of compression. A, and then a little bit of um tape or some sort of a Saturation, it helps. Tape or tubes. Tape or tube saturation. And then um, some sort of excited to brighten. Mix. Careful. Be careful here. Yeah, that's pretty that there are there are other things, right? But uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, so if you're gonna do this, a multiband compressor is what I would recommend. But that would be that that would be the basic. That's uh, that's what you would do. So let's do this. Um, I'm gonna show you my 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 generally my mastering chain would look something like this. I would go I would go with something like um, the Shadow Hills mastering compressor with these. Um, um, what is that called? The the mastering loud medium PGM reset so i would go with this one then i would add a little at the end of uh, with a uh, no tweaks on that one i like the way it is then some sort of like 37 or like a studio 800 something like this with a little bit that uh, you can uh, find a, a very subtle preset something like this and then uh just uh, a little bit of fresh air 
just a tad. Something like this. It's a little bit. It's just a, a little bit more than that. Now let's do this with an. And and this is the sound. And generally here I go with this mix bus polish. I think it is. And then I bring it down to. Uh, no, not this one. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I bring it down to. Yeah, something. Yes, uh, something like twenty ten or something like this. Twenty ten, something like this. And so if we. If we play back the mix, let's see, this one here, for example. Let's go here. Let's go to this one. So with, without. See, so, and we can go one, one by one, but see, this opens the mix already a little bit. So, oh, by the way, I forgot uh, with. So this can be like uh, something like S1 from Waves or something like this. You can do all this with, uh, you know, with uh, Isotope Ozone, right? Um, with, with, and. But um, I'm using different plugins and uh, some of free plugins, etc. But let's uh, let's go to the staccatos and so you can see the difference when I add this guy. If we, it's just one long note, for example. the most amazing pl plugins I've ever used. It's beautiful, beautiful, amazing what it does, in my opinion, such a subtle but meaningful way. Then this guy. Right, and then finally, obviously, this is the most drastic and the most obvious one. Like. So now this careful with this because it's usually is pleasant. We always do too much of this, but it depends on. This is necessary for cinematic music. We we use this. We need to we need to have this because. Um It just adds, and they, I'm using this one as a free one. It sounds pretty decent. You can do this with EQ. You can do this with a brighten. You can do this with an exciter or something like this, right? Um, Isotopes, exciter works great. And there are different flavors. You've got tubes, and you've got the different types of tubes, and uh, you've got tape saturation. And that. So there's there's a black box as well. It's just, just adding some sort of brightness and excitement, and uh, a little bit more top end to the mix. I like this one. This is to use. It's free, um, but. <laughs> It's important. See, I'm, I'm gonna deactivate halfway of the first ostinato. See that you can like lose this. I, I, now I'm gonna do it the other way around. More exaggerated, way too much, but here we go. So you see how when you add it, it's not, it's oh, not that big of a deal, but when you remove it, it's like, oh man, yeah, that was so, so um, dull. Right? So generally I keep it, at, you know, under 20, max 25, 28, it's my max depending on 
where I want to take this. But this is important because especially when you are doing uh, stuff for Netflix or TV or things like this, because generally they're gonna, the music is very important for the emotional component of it, right? It's go, it's uh, sometimes it's 50% of the story. So that being said, if you uh, have, uh, and then they mix your music in, uh, you know, in a dub stage with uh, big speakers, kind of like cinematic mix or, or, or you're listening to your music with these speakers, or you with headphones, or with an ear field, and uh, everything so, so, sounds so perfect, so close, and with so much definition. When you play your music back to your, like, when someone is listening, when, when someone is watching the movie, your music is mixed under dialogue and sound effects. The speakers are crappy speakers pointing backwards, right? And so you're gonna lose so much and so that top end that definition is gonna help and and most importantly gonna lower the volume right and they're gonna be listening to this to the movie you know from like you know uh, nine feet away or three meters away something like this right in the couch or five meters away 15 feet away so the dialogue being the most important element it's going to always sound loud but your music which is the second jury right dialogue is like the it's like the it's the like the lead it's like the uh, the, the dialogue in a, in a, in a, in, a, in a movie is like the 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 melody or the the the, the voice in a song um and so it's the most important element. It's the one that's going to always predominate. It's the one that's always going to be present. And so your music is always going to be secondary, playing behind dialogue. On top of that, <clears throat> if you're playing the, if you're listening to the music, if you're listening, watching the movie with a low volume, far away from TV, crappy speak, you're gonna lose so much of your music. So that, that and the first thing that you're gonna lose is the definition, is the high frequencies. Again, are the first that they do with the, it's the, the the frequencies with less energy that get lost, got lost first. So. With cinematic, with classical music, you generally don't need that much. But with um, with classical music, we do. Uh, sorry, with uh, cinematic music, it tends to sound a little bit brighter. Okay. So that's that. Let's continue and let's. Uh, um, so I'm gonna move this down here, and I'm going to do the 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 percussion stem. So you see here. So it would be the same thing, right? But now we have this one. Right. So let's take a listen to the percussion beat here. Uh, with um, with these guys. Actually. Again. So there you go. That's it. This template is finished. It's not finished, but because I have, you know, you know there are a, a certain things we have to duplicate. This here, 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 etc. Right? You know what I'm doing. And I haven't finished. Uh, we didn't. We didn't. We did not finish last week doing all the cues for all the instruments. We have set up the reverbs and the sends, but for just for the the strings high long that we haven't set it up for the rest of the instruments. We haven't done it for the woods. Uh, we have not done percussion, mid percussion, low piano keys, etc. Um, we have not. Uh, yeah. So so there are certain things that we still haven't done, but uh, we've done the entire process, just not in every track. We have set up all the tracks that we did that last week. Um, then we've uh, set up all the groups. We did that last week. We've uh, the, added all the mixing plugins, the um, uh, their, uh, compression for compression for percussion. We've opened the the, the strings, just that are especially the highest strings with uh, S1 from Waves. Uh, we set up all the reverb sends. We set up all the effects groups with all the reverbs. We have a convolution reverb and a, an algorithmic reverb, reverb, algorithmic reverb. And then we also set up like a gated reverb for percussion, a mid reverb for mid percussion. We also set up the, and we showed options for like the long reverb or the long convolution reverb. We've seen cinematic rooms, we've seen Bahala as well. And we've seen some of the free uh, ones from QAs, but the logic has as well, and you know, and then we set up the the stems. The goal here, so the goal in the groups is mix. The goal in the stems is mastering. So we set up all the uh, mastering plugins chain. We talked about you know what what is needed here with EQ uh, or EQ, and then with then compression 
multiband if possible, a little bit of tape or chips saturation, and then exciter. And that's what we did with these plugins here. Uh, there you go. With uh, so a little bit of compression for percussion, then the uh, extra compression here, uh, which I do for, for everyone, but it's a very solid compression, then a tape saturation, and then a little bit of brightness. And we've seen the difference. <laughs> before and after. And this all this gets routed to the master. Let's let's just move it here. Let's just move it here. Uh the stereo boom here so we can see it. And if we wanted to export this, let's just record um let's record a melody line over here real quick. Let's do strings. Percussion is super loud. We need, uh, we're gonna go here, five, this part of balancing. Uh, we're gonna com command shift and we're gonna bring down this minus uh, 6 dBs. Let's see. Let's see if uh, I can compete. I think so. It's uh, still a little bit too loud. Minus 9. Let's see. I think no, I think it was good. Let's bring it back to minus six is good. And now Yeah. No, in fact minus maybe minus four. Minus four. Maybe there you go. Ah, dang. Oh, yeah, yeah, it worked. Dum 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 dum. No 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 no. Let's go just to the. Stupid piece of music that I've ever witnessed. It's bad. It is bad, but it works. Uh, maybe let's see how low the horns go. Yeah. Bones uh,
for a bit. Great. So now, the reason, the reason why I've done this... Cool. The reason why I've done this is so we can export. If we go here... What do we have in keys? Uh, we said that the Celesta would go to keys. Celeste, Celesta, and what's going on? Celesta and Arp, we said that they were going to keys. And keys is going here. And keys and others should go to, not percussion, but keys. There you go, keys. That's why we now we got these three stems. Okay, cool. So now if we hit A, let's see how this will work. So this is going to be uh, let's take this to the right place. Yes, yes. Multiple instances. No, from beginner to pro. Sports, sports. There you go. And uh, test export. Okay, cool. This is the name, save. We're gonna make sure that we effects is included. So CSPM, and we're gonna export the stereo and the orchestra, orchestra percussion scenes and keys. There's nothing in scenes, but we'll export it anyway. Well, no, it is not exported for first bit. So export audio, and here's what's, here's what's gonna happen, boom. So export number one. Export number one, there you go. So the, the full master, there's the, the stereo out. Export number two, here we go, coming up. Boom, orchestra, there you go. Orchestra, second, percussion. And finally, the keys. And now if we go here, if we go to composing, projects, uh, template training, from beginner to pro, export, there you go. We've got the stereo out. Not bad, not bad, oops. Not bad for a, a, free, a free template. The orchestra with the reverbs. With the reverbs, percussion. And keys. The arp and celesta. We're good to go. I'm late. I'm late to a meeting. Eight minutes late, but it has been. And I, I know there are some questions. I'll read them later, and uh, hopefully, uh, no promises, but hopefully, I'll be able to do a uh, a video answering these questions. Let me see. I just wanted to appreciate uh, some questions. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to appreciate your time and uh, being here watching. Uh, appreciate this so much. Have a fantastic day, and uh, have a great week. And I'll see you in the next one. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.